Is time travel more than just a sci-fi dream? Can we actually journey to the past? Could we someday build a time machine and revisit history? Or is it forever beyond our reach? In Einstein's theory, we've got four-dimensional space, then you're prevented from traveling back in time, actually by the speed of light. It fits into the geometry in that way. Though you can imagine wormholes and these ideas that you can tunnel through and take shortcuts. Stephen Hawking has a, a thing called the chronology protection conjecture. And the conjecture is, from a physics perspective, it seems to make no sense. It's not a way to build a universe to allow you to be able to travel back in time and prevent your parents from meeting before you're born or whatever you do. So there's a conjecture that the laws of nature will always be such that time travel into the past is forbidden. Now that's a conjecture at the moment. It's certainly it's true in what's called Einstein's special theory of relativity and it might be true or not in his general theory, we're not sure because you can have these shortcut things, but most theoretical physicists would say, we think, we'll conjecture, physics protects the past. We can easily travel forward in time, and we've known how to do that since 1905. Einstein's special theory of relativity lays out the whole recipe of how you can move into the future. And all you have to do is go into a sort of a lower gravity field relative to other people or just travel very fast and your clock will tick slower than that of everybody else that you've left behind. And then when you return, you'll be younger than your twin, for example, if you had left your twin back on Earth. So in that sense, you are traveling into the future. That's easy to do and we've known how to do that. Traveling backwards, that's the problem. We think we can do that. I have some colleagues who've made some calculations that assert that depending on a trajectory you take around a black hole, you can come out and end up in the past of when you started. But that takes extraordinary setup to make happen. But right now, no problem traveling into the future. As we delve deeper into the realm of time travel, we uncover a spectrum of possibilities and scientific theories that stretch our understanding of reality. The concept of time travel, once relegated to the world of science fiction, has gained a foothold in serious scientific discourse. One of the most riveting aspects of time travel is its foundation in Einstein's theory of relativity. According to this theory, time is not a constant entity, but varies with the observer's speed relative to the speed of light. This means time travel to the future is theoretically possible under the right conditions, such as high-speed travel close to the speed of light. This phenomenon, known as time dilation, has been experimentally validated in particle physics experiments and with astronauts in space. Yeah, I know a number, which is the, the speed the protons go around the Large Hadron Collider. So they go around the Large Hadron Collider at 99.999999% the speed of light. At that speed, time passes 7,000 times more slowly for the protons than it does for the experimenters sat watching them going around. And that's relativity. So every time someone gets on a rocket and goes to the moon and comes back, that their time will have passed slightly more slowly than the people on Earth. Therefore, they'll have gone into the future. In our exploration of time travel, we now turn to its core, the practicalities and implications. The potential for time travel opens a Pandora's box of questions about causality free will, and the fabric of reality. If we could traverse time, we might witness firsthand the birth of stars, the rise and fall of civilizations, or even the nuances of our personal histories. However, this power comes with profound ethical considerations. How would our interventions in the past or future shape the present? Would we be mere observers or active participants in shaping history? But let's pivot to the scientific underpinning of time travel, time dilation. This concept, integral to Einstein's theory of relativity, suggests that time's passage can vary depending on speed and gravity. Imagine traveling at near light speed, only to return to an Earth that has aged centuries. How would we perceive such a journey? Could this be our first real step towards time travel? The faster you move, the slower time ticks for you as others view it relative to the observer. You don't know anything's happening. Your clock still ticks as far, you still got your, your heartbeat, all of this. So this is not a physiological thing. It is an actual property of the fabric of space and time under those conditions. So I watch you fly by and the faster you go, the slower time ticks for you. 
So not only does speed do this, also the strength of a gravitational field will have the same effect on you. Initially, when formulated, you're thinking it's just because you're moving. It's actually way deeper than that. The GPS satellites orbit higher than our space station. The geosynchronous satellites are like middle orbit. That is far enough away from Earth's source of gravity for them to have a different, a measurably different space-time condition so that their clocks tick faster than our clocks on Earth's surface. Because they're farther away, their time ticks faster relative to us. But we get precise timings from geosynchronous satellites. How does this work? We pre-correct the time signal from the GPS satellites to compensate for Einstein's general theory of relativity so that by the time the time reaches us, it's been properly corrected and it matters to us and our space-time continuum, not the one that's at middle Earth orbit. Once you calculate that, then you do and you say, oh my gosh, the formula works. Einstein was right. It is true. In our journey through the realms of time travel, we encounter the Alcubierre drive, a speculative yet captivating concept grounded in Einstein's field equations. Envisioned by physicist Miguel Alcubierre in 1994, this theoretical construct proposes a mechanism for faster-than-light travel. It circumvents the universal speed limit by manipulating space-time itself. The drive would create a bubble of flat space-time around the spacecraft, contracting space in front of it and expanding space behind it. This manipulation allows the spacecraft to move within this bubble, effectively enabling it to travel distances faster than light could in normal space-time. What makes the Alcubierre drive so fascinating is that it doesn't violate the laws of physics as we understand them. Instead, it leverages the flexibility of space-time as described by general relativity. However, this drive remains purely theoretical, with significant challenges in terms of energy requirements and practical implementation. But the Alcubierre drive isn't the only speculative method of traversing vast distances or possibly time. Wormholes, another theoretical construct, raise a tantalizing question. Could these hypothetical shortcuts in space-time also serve as conduits for time travel? So yes, uh, wormholes are allowed geometries in Einstein's theory of general relativity. If you just take that theory alone. What do I mean by that? So it, they really are shortcuts through space and time. If wormholes exist and you could travel through them and they were big enough and stable enough, then you can build a time machine. Time dilation, a fascinating aspect of Einstein's theory of relativity, occurs when time passes at different rates in different reference frames. In everyday life, its effects are imperceptible, yet it becomes significant at high velocities close to the speed of light. This phenomenon is not just theoretical, but has practical implications in fields like satellite-based navigation systems, where slight differences in time due to the satellite's speeds and Earth's gravitational field must be accounted for to maintain accuracy. At ordinary speeds, time dilation is minimal, but as we approach a significant fraction of the speed of light, the effects become dramatic. Clocks on a spacecraft moving near light speed would tick more slowly compared to those on Earth. This leads to an intriguing question, what happens as we push the boundaries, approaching closer and closer to light speed? Let's keep going faster and faster. 90% the speed of light, 99% the speed of light. Time is ticking slower and slower and slower. For you, you will watch the whole future history of the universe unfold in front of your eyes as fractions of a second go by for you. As you go 99, 99.9, 99.99% the speed of light. There's a formula for this, of course, the concept of traveling to the past is one of the most tantalizing aspects of time travel. While forward time travel aligns with Einstein's theory of relativity, backward time travel is steeped in complexity and paradoxes. Theoretical physics suggests that if time travel to the past were possible, it could raise profound questions about causality and the fabric of our reality. Would we be able to observe history without altering it? Or would our mere presence create ripples that change the course of events? This brings us to an enduring curiosity. Will we ever truly decipher the enigma of time travel? Is it a realm forever consigned to science fiction? 
or will future discoveries unlock the doors to the past? It's not good enough just to travel back in time. You need something to propel you in space as well. So it's a space-time space machine, not just a time machine. <laughs>